Hi, my name is Maya Rose Craig and I'm a 19 year old bird watcher and environmental activist. I've always had a really strong connection with nature and the outdoors. My parents started taking me bird watching when I was nine days old and they've always had a really big presence in my life and so there was never a single moment where I realised that I loved birds and I loved bird watching. But when I was a kid there were so many different things about birds that really fascinated, that really had me love them I guess. Um, like firstly just the fact that they could fly was so exciting to me as a kid. Um, you know, the fact that they had wings and they could go in the air. The fact that you could go literally anywhere and there would be birds around. I've spent the last week up in the Arctic and bearing witness to the sea ice minimum which has been the second lowest ever and it feels like a real tragedy to me because it's such a beautiful place with such amazing unique wildlife and we're destroying it, we're melting it and we're gonna lose it forever before we even realise what we had. I think one of my most memorable birding experiences was probably when I was 11 years old and I had gone on a bird watching trip to Australia with my parents. One of the like really key birds we wanted to see was something called a southern cassowary. And these birds are amazing. They're like these six foot tall dinosaurs with massive talons that could slice you to pieces and these weird sort of um, crests on the top of their head and um, as an 11 year old I just thought they looked so cool when I saw pictures of them so they were the bird that I was desperate to see um, and it was this big question of whether or not we were going to be able to see one and then literally as we were driving down the motorway um, there was just one stood on the side of the road watching us and I saw it and we watched it for ages in the end and I just thought Again, even more than from the picture, that it was absolutely incredible, so beautiful, so cool. I set up my organisation Black to Nature um, very, very young in the scheme of things, I guess, and there are various reasons we do what we do. It's all about getting people from ethnic minority backgrounds out into nature and into the environment, but the organisation and the camps we do originally just came from my love of nature and the fact that I wanted to share that with other people combined with the fact that by the age of 13, and as someone who was um, half Bangladeshi, I had realised that there was no one who looked like me in rural areas and out in the countryside, and I realised that I really wanted that to change. Um, and so ever since then, we've run two conferences, we've run more nature camps, nature weekends than I can count. We've done all sorts of other activities and we have connected literally hundreds of people to nature over the years. So I think one of the things these days that I'm most well known for is last year when I went up to the Arctic with Greenpeace and did a Youth Strike for Climate out on an Arctic ice flow and that trip had a massive impact on me as a climate activist. I found it incredibly shocking, incredibly upsetting because I was in this landscape full of ice and I was having people talk to me about how it would be completely gone by the time I was in my 30s and it just, I think it made everything feel very real, um, you know, watching the Arctic ice melt around me. But I think also the thing that really shocked me was realising just how interconnected the entire world is. The Ar Arctic ice melting on the top of the world was having an impact on people all over, including my own family in Bangladesh, dealing with, you know, flooding, cyclones, monsoon season, things like that. Um, and I suppose it helped me to realise, or forced me to realise, the, the true scale of climate change, what we're really dealing with and just how how shocking it really is. And I think the most important thing for me, the most important outcome of this voyage into the Arctic is that when we dock back in Norway in a week, it isn't over. In fact, I hope the conversation's only just beginning, that people are going to start taking action in terms of climate breakdown and people are going to start thinking of proper solutions because by the time I'm 30, this could all be gone. And I think that that would be the greatest tragedy ever.